welcome to our show health and wellness myths and facts now hormones affect everything from blood sugar to blood pressure growth fertility sex drive metabolism and even sleep their influence goes as far as changing the way we think and act on a day to day basis so there's no doubt that hormones are powerful one such hormone is insulin now insulin is a key factor in the development of diabetes insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas that has a number of important functions in the human body particularly in the control of blood glucose levels and preventing hyperglycemia now insulin also has an effect on several other areas of the body including the synthesis of lipids and regulation of enzymatic activity there is no doubt that many of you are aware of diabetes but few are aware of the role insulin plays in the management as well as the prevention of diabetes now according to a report globally about 9 million people with type 1 diabetes rely on insulin for survival and about 63 million individuals with type 2 diabetes require insulin for treatment now although the discovery of insulin in 1921 absolutely revolutionized the treatment of diabetes inadequate access to insulin and diabetes care remains a problem in many countries a century later insulin usage and its role in diabetes management are surrounded by various myths there are eminent endocrinologists with us today that can help you better understand how insulin plays a role in diabetes management joining on the on the broadcast dr akash shah consultant endocrinologist at the sushrut hospital from ahmedabad we also have dr kanhaiya agrawal with us is an ex senior resident of endocrinology at cmc velour also an ex lecturer at brdmc hormone and diabetes care in gorakhpur dr rakesh arora also on the broadcast with us he's a consultant endocrinologist at the government medical college in punjab's amritsar dr shah i'd like to begin with you now it's well known that insulin regulates the glucose level in our blood stream but how does insulin work in the body do we become more resistant to insulin as we age right so i would like to explain it in a bit simplified way to our audience our body is made up of the cells cells are our, the basic building blocks what insulin does is it opens up the doors to of the rooms so the cells are kind of rooms and which has got doors insulin acts on the cells so that doors are opened up and now glucose makes entry inside the cell and ins- insulin also facilitates the cells so that this glucose can be utilized ultimately basic effect and more potent effect is seen on the liver muscles and, and fat cells so that this glucose is utilized and ultimately levels are maintained dr agarwal now diabetes is a growing health problem in india is this due to insulin resistance and are indians more prone to insulin resistance yes well said uh, as we know that we are the second largest in the world to have the diabetes after the china and with the pace we are getting the numbers we will be top the list in 2045 so due to the uh, various thing like poor lifestyle eating uh, junk foods canned food items overweight or obesity or more carbohydrate intake in our country this all lead to the more insulin resistance let's other thing like family history of diabetes and ethnicity like we have the more visceral fat that means the fats around the organs all these things leading to the prone to have the insulin resistance so with all these factors indians are more prone to have the insulin resistance uh, we are having the more number of diabetic of There is a strong evidence that Indians have higher levels of insulin resistance and a stronger genetic predisposition to diabetes as Dr Agrawal has made it clear for you with that let's also rope in Dr Rakesh Arora now Dr pre-diabetes is an opportunity to prevent diabetes can insulin therapy help in treating pre-diabetes yes you are very right that pre-diabetes is an opportunity to prevent diabetes mellitus but insulin is not the right choice as a preventive measure Uh, because pre-diabetes is a risk state that denotes the blood glucose values in between normal and pre-diabetes. It's not a disease entity. So basically, it means that uh, people with pre-diabetes are at increased risk of developing diabetes mellitus uh, than normal persons. But progression to diabetes mellitus is not inevitable. So the first and foremost mode of intervention in such people is lifestyle intervention. It comprises two major components. one is the medical nutrition therapy which is basically the dietary modification so such persons are advised to take small frequent meals they are advised to consume more vegetables and fruits with low glycemic indices uh, they are advised to consume food rich in fiber uh, they are advised to avoid direct sugars like sweetened beverages they are advised to avoid food rich in saturated 
start and collect them. The second major component is physical activity. So they are advised to have a, uh, an active lifestyle. They are advised to have an exercise schedule with moderate intensity exercises, for example, a breath walk, for at least 30 to 45 minutes per day, uh, for at least five days in a week. And on top of that, they can also go for resistance training. So in people with pre-diabetes with uh, blood glucose values bordering the cutoff for diagnosis of diabetes mellitus, we may sometimes give oral medications that belong to the category of uh, insulin sensitizing, for example, metformin, that enhance the uh, action of body's own insulin. But insulin therapy from outside is not recommended as of now. Right. Dr. Akasha, it's also a common myth that insulin can cause dangerously low blood sugar levels. Is it true and what can be done to manage such conditions? Well, it is a common concern that we come across in our patients and till some extent it is a genuine query, a genuine concern by our patients. So I would like to explain it first in a simplified way. Consider your body as a vehicle and whatever glucose is there is a fuel. So whatever you eat ultimately gets converted into glucose that is the fuel and insulin is kind of an accelerator. When you push the pedal, when you accelerate it, when you use the insulin, your glucose gets utilized. So there has to be a balance that should be maintained between the fuel and the acceleration. That is, if you take too much of flu, uh, food, too much of glucose intake, that leads to elevation in blood glucose. That is, your sugar getting out of control. Or else, if you accelerate too much, that is, if you take excess doses of insulin or if you take unbalanced dose as compared to the food Intake. If you take less insulin, more insulin, ultimately you will end up in hypoglycemia. So first and foremost, to avoid any hypoglycemia, you should maintain a balance and usually your doctors, your care providers carefully advise your dose so that you don't end up in hypoglycemia. However, if at all you face any troubles, that is sugar going down, you may experience certain symptoms like tremors in your hands, excessive perspiration, sweating and palpitations. In those scenarios, you should immediately check your blood sugar level. If it is found to be below 70 mg per deciliter, you should take 3 teaspoonful of sugar with water and you should repeat checking every 15 minutes until your sugar record is more than 100. And afterwards, you need to consume small amount of snacks which contains some roti rice mixed with dal or sabzi. And afterwards, if required, you may need to reduce the dose of insulin as per your body requirement. Right. Now it's clear that insulin is responsible for reducing blood glucose levels in the body when it's too high. Dr. Agrawal, when is the best time to take an insulin injection? Yes. So that it depends mainly upon the type of insulin. Like uh, in the patient for type 1 diabetes, we used to give the four times insulin, mainly the basal and polar selectment, what we say. Well, in the type 2 diabetes, which commonly see in the practice, where we need to start the insulin, then we start usually the longer acting insulin. And that insulin having the duration of action at least for 20 to 24 hours, sometimes few insulin having the longer action duration up to 48 hours. So that we usually give at the bedtime or we say at the fixed time, that is around 9 to 10 p.m. But that is depends upon the individual, so individual. sometimes we need to give in the twice daily dose also. While those insulin, those are the shorter acting insulin, like we have the regular insulin or we have the analogs in the form of Aspart or Lispro. So this insulin usually controls control the post meal glucose level. So this action starts after the 5 to 10, uh, 5 to 30 minutes of the administration of the insulin and that can take care of the post meal glucose level. So this is depend and that has to be given at least 5 to 30 minutes prior to meal. So depending upon the insulin like regular insulin which we usually give 30 minutes prior to the our meal or analogs like Aspart or Dispro which we usually give around 5 minutes prior to insulin. So overall the everything has to be decided by your clinician or physician, by your doctor that what is the best time to take insulin and which are the insulin need to be taken. So do not try yourself or do not add, uh, like make yourself a decision for the starting insulin. Thank you. Right. Dr. Aurora, is it true that wherever on your body you inject insulin, it affects your blood glucose levels and why? Uh, yeah, it's absolutely true that the spike of insulin injection plays a significant role in how the insulin will bring down the uh, blood glucose. So basically, insulin is supposed to be injected in the subcutaneous fat tissue that is present just below the skin. 
when insulin is injected into this subcutaneous fat tissue, the insulin molecules they aggregate amongst themselves, and then they are slowly released from this aggregate of insulin molecules over a period of time into the blood circulation. So, if insulin is injected at a site where the subcutaneous fat is less, it may get injected into the muscles, and the absorption of insulin may be very rapid, and it may bring down the blood glucose very rapidly, leading to what we call as uh, hypoglycemia, which can even be fatal. So, insulin needs to be injected at proper size. The recommended size are uh, first abdomen, which is the most commonly used size, at around four fingers breadth away from the belly button or two inches away from the belly button on uh, on each side. Then uh, it can be injected on the outer and upper aspects of the thighs, which is again very easy for self injection. The other recommended sites are upper and outer aspects of the buttocks, but it is not easy for self injection. Then it can be injected on the upper arm. Again, uh, it may be difficult to inject by yourself, especially when you are using the uh, your wrong hand. The patient should also avoid injecting on the mold or scars or areas around the belly button. And finally, they should try to rotate their injection site because insulin, if it is injected repeatedly over the same site, it leads to accumulation of the subcutaneous fat, which leads to even further delay in the absorption, and it can hamper the efficacy of the uh, injected insulin. We're stopping for a short break, doctors. Our experts, though, stay on with us to answer all your queries regarding how insulin plays a role in diabetes management. Our experts from across the country are here to answer all your queries regarding how insulin plays a role in diabetes management. Now, Dr. Shah, people with diabetes have comorbid conditions and take several medications. Can you take insulin together with other medicines as well? Right. Now, majority of our diabetic patients, as the duration of diabetes progresses, as the duration goes beyond 5 years or 10 years, they tend to have lot many other comorbidities. This include their hypertension, this include their uh, cardiovascular status, that, that is heart attack issues, etc. So, majority of our patients are on multiple medications and they have got this question, this doubt, whether it is safe to take insulin along with other medications. Now, for majority of the other medications, there is no major concern, no as such adverse event seen. That is, insulin is safe to be administered with other drugs. However, when we are talking about medications for glucose control, now many of our patients are taking insulin as well as tablets for diabetes control. And when patient is getting this multiple tablets as well as insulin, there is still a chance of sugar going down, that is hypoglycemia. Hence, you should not play with the doses of the medication or insulin by yourself. It has to be monitored, observed by your care provider. And as per the advices, you should adjust the doses so that you get the best possible control. Otherwise, there is nothing to be worried about. Right. So, insulin does not interact with other medicines. In that case, it's safe to be administered with other drugs as Dr. Shah has just asserted. With that, let's go across to Dr. Agrawal. Doctor, what role does a healthy lifestyle play when you're on insulin therapy? See, like a healthy lifestyle, it doesn't mean that we have to go for only activity. It includes everything our behavior also. So, like from our diet pattern, as we discussed that we have to avoid the junk food items or kind food items or cold drinks or many more things like uh, we all ever know about the bad food items. Apart from that uh, physical activity, I, Dr. Uh, Arora said that 30 minutes walking per day at least uh, uh, for five times in a week. That is very important to maintain our insulin sensitivity that means reduces the insulin resistance. So in spite of controlling the blood glucose level with this physical activity or healthy lifestyle, it having the helps uh, on the various other parameters. Like it reduces the dose of insulin requirement. So those patients uh, usually go for this physical activity like walking or exercise, the requirement of insulin is uh, less as compared to those who do not walk. Apart from these things, uh, we are having also good effect over the blood pressure, reduces the blood pressure, healthy lifestyle also reduces your weight, improves the, your metabolic parameters like uh, lipid profile, reduces the fatty liver conditions and also you improves your heart, con heart conditions. So you, your, your heart also becomes very healthy with this all healthy lifestyle interventions. So everything that uh, we all 
should go for the daily walking for at least 30 minutes per day and I believe that daily walking is better than five times a week. Now there are some reports about the development of an artificial pancreas. Dr. Rakesh Arora, can these help cure diabetes? And if you could break down for us, what is an artificial pancreas? How promising is this new advance? And is it available in India yet? Basically, an artificial pancreas is a closed loop system of devices that tries to mimic the function of a normal human pancreas. It's used for patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus who totally lack insulin production. So they are dependent upon insulin given from outside. Uh, normally they are given insulin in the form of injections, either two or three or four injections per day or as standalone subcutaneous insulin infusion form. And then these patients need to perform frequent self-monitoring of blood glucose to decide upon the dose of insulin that needs to be injected. Artificial pancreas has three major components. Uh, first is the continuous glucose monitor, which is a small needle which is inserted just below the skin, which tracks the body's uh, glucose every few minutes. And then it sends the data to the next component, which is the program, or the software which can be either in a smartphone or in the insulin infusion pump, which is the third component. So the function of this program is to calculate the insulin dose that is required for the body as per the current uh, glucose, uh, glucose value. And third component is the insulin infusion pump, which receives this data from the program and uh, it delivers the dose of insulin as calculated by this program. So it's a very promising approach, but it's not a cure. We cannot call it a cure because patients will require some form of insulin uh, during the rest of their life. However, it has several advantages, like it's more automated. It does not require frequent input from the patient. Uh, the patient is free from multiple tricks, from self-monitoring and insulin injections. Uh, the patient's glucose reading can be tracked by a doctor or a, a parent or a guardian who is sitting remotely somewhere else. And some artificial pancreas, they also have an insulin sustained function. So whenever the blood glucose levels, they go dangerously low, the insulin delivery is suspended and then thus these uh, patients are protected from hypoglycemia. Hmm. So it's a very promising approach, but in India, it's still at a nascent stage. Uh, I think there's only one report of a patient being put on artificial pancreas in 2021, and still it is not commercially available in India. Right, lots to unpack there. Thank you so much for the clarity on the matter. Also, Dr. Shah, does injecting insulin into the stomach cause additional fat to accumulate there? So, uh, Dr. Arora, a while ago, has nicely explained how it works when you inject it. It goes inside the fat at the level of the stomach. There are two different components, two different effects. One is overall insulin leads to increase in appetite, increase in hunger. And also, whatever is being eaten gets deposited in a better manner. So ultimately, the person is likely to gain some weight and that is how one way, that is how we can explain there should there has to be some weight gain and some increase in stomach fat. Another thing, when the person fails to rotate the side properly, that is, if the insulin is being injected at the same side multiple times, it is more likely to lead to local increase, that is a small area of fat getting increased. And this happens by because insulin, apart from its overall effect via getting circulated in the blood, it also has effect on the site where we are injecting it. So when it gets deposited at the same site multiple times, it leads to a small lump-like area, small swelling-like area, which is just nothing but the fat. So we always explain to our patients about how to rotate the site so that insulin works in the best way and this kind of fat deposition, the localized swelling can be avoided. And yes, as I explained previously, the weight gain and it leading to the increase in overall abdominal fat that can be prevented by ongoing continuous activity exercise and maintaining a proper food and insulin balance. Dr. Agarwal, what is the difference between short term and long term insulin? Yes. So like the short term insulin, it means the short acting or long acting insulin actually. So short acting insulin is the action of insulin which starts uh, uh, like uh, 5 minutes or 50 minutes or 30 minutes after the insulin administration administration or last action for around uh, 4 to 6 hours. The duration of action is around 4 to 6 hours. 
so we are having two category in this the body sort acting we have the ultra sort acting again so ultra sort acting is the analog type which has been genetically modified more so like uh, we have the sort acting that is the regular insulin that is uh, like commonly used and bit cheaper so uh, it is usually uh, given 30 minutes prior to meal because its action starts 30 minutes after the administration and duration of action of this insulin is around 6 to 8 hours depending upon the individual so individual had different uh, variability La, uh, secondly about the uh, ultra sort acting that i discussed about that earlier the aspart or lispro so the, its action usually start uh, uh, like 5 minutes after the administration so and duration of action is around 4 hours to 6 hours so this uh, like again i have to given 5 minutes prior to meal sometimes in we have also like uh, even faster acting uh, aspart is there so in that uh, we sometimes prefer also to give even a uh, post uh, meal also because of the risk of the hypoglycemia or in children those who cannot take the like uh, 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 appropriate amount of the food before uh, uh, after the insulin so due to risk avoiding the risk of hypoglycemia secondly if we have the long acting insulin we have that again two category we have the like one is a like uh, uh, npc insulin is there that is the uh, action we have duration of action for almost 12 hours and we have the and there is a glargine we had the duration of action around 18 to 24 hours and the very modified form is also there we have the regular day the ultra long acting the duration of action is almost uh, say 44 hours so depending upon the type of insulin or the, depending upon the uh, our uh, like uh, patient's profile we choose the insulin like in type 1 diabetes we used to give the three times uh, short acting insulin and one time long acting insulin in type 2 diabetes when we start the insulin as an initiation therapy uh, as a like add on therapy to the oral drug so in that condition we used to give the uh, longer acting insulin uh, that uh, as a bed time so these are the difference between the shorter acting and longer acting insulin thank you right thank you so much doctors for joining us with all that advice we hope these experts were able to bust all your myths regarding the role insulin plays in managing diabetes thank you for investing your time and watching goodbye